Dark Souls and Bloodborne wrestle with humanity's place in the universe and the socio-political dynamic between those with power and those without. They play with the tension of challenge and the catharsis of success. They are, they are a product to be sold to as many people as possible. Prepare to die. The hunt begins! When it comes to marketing, FromSoft Souls games have had some weird campaigns. And I don't just mean trailers featuring anachronistic music. The Souls marketing campaigns are like a traveling carnival, filled with odd stunts and gimmicks. And like a traveling carnival, these events came and went, quickly fading from memory. Let's get into the good, the bad, and the weird of the Souls marketing campaigns. See what you remember, what you've never heard of, and bask in the strange attempts publishers have made to market the Souls games. First, I'd like to get the big one out of the way, a bed of chaos level gimmick that is infamous within the Souls community, the Dark Souls 3 Hot Wings Challenge. In the month leading up to the release of Dark Souls 3, Bandai Namco teamed up with UK restaurant chain Meat Liquor to do the hashtag Dark Souls Wings Challenge. Participants were tasked with eating 20 hot wings as fast as possible for the chance to win a PS4 and a copy of Dark Souls 3, with the fastest time in the UK winning a prestige edition of Dark Souls 3 that came with that massive Lord of Cinder statue. The wings were made using a habanero sauce specifically made for the contest, and participants were required to wear gloves and sign a waiver in order to compete in the challenge. All participants got this very dorky shirt, and probably a challenging but fair toilet visit. Now we head to a pretty cool contest held for Dark Souls 2, the Shield Design Contest. In Spring 2013, Bandai Namco held a contest for the community to design shields. This is actually a follow-up on a similar contest held in Japan for Dark Souls 1, and is where we got the Sanctus Shield from, but that's all I could find on that contest. For the Dark Souls 2 Shield Design Contest, over 1800 designs were submitted. From these entries, From Software chose 6 designs. Those designs went into the game, and the designers got free copies of Dark Souls 2, as well as their designs forged into reality by a blacksmith. There were also six entries chosen by the community, and the designer of those shields received a copy of Dark Souls 2. While these entries were not put into the game, the Marker's shield design, inspired by Epic Namebro, was likely the inspiration for the Porcine shield in Dark Souls 2 and is definitely the most ham-fisted community reference in the Souls games. The next piece of marketing speaks to the ephemeral nature of these marketing stunts, the Bloodborne Experience Interactive Trailer. The Bloodborne Experience was a series of graphics and video clips that you could explore in different orders to learn more about the hunter's weapons in various early game locations. Those who looked through everything got a code for a PS4 Bloodborne theme. It wasn't easy to do though, I remember trying to look at everything, only for it to crash every other screen, and my experience was a common one. But I did snag that theme. As you've been watching, the barely functional experience in 2015 was actually a step up from what remains of the site today. Fear the old blood, indeed. Our constant companion of this series, Dark Souls 3, offers up a pair of videos that are not trailers, or even really informative about Dark Souls 3 in any way. I'm talking about the Witches animated trailer by Eli Roth and the retro trailer Dark Souls 3 the movie, which you can find linked below. Eli Roth, the famous horror director behind films such as Cabin Fever and Hostel, teamed up with Bandai Namco to create an animated short that could be best described as Dark Souls 3 adjacent. At the time, the connection to Dark Souls 3 was not apparent, and that never changed. Are these the Firekeepers from Dark Souls 2, the Witches of Hemwick? Perhaps the most confusing part of this trailer is the size of the rat, which drastically undersells the rats of Lothric in a big bad way. On the other hand, we have Dark Souls 3 the movie, which provided the answer to a question we've all asked ourselves. What if Dark Souls 3 was an 80s B-horror movie? The answer is that it's pretty awesome. I actually really like this trailer, even if it preys on my 80s nostalgia for no apparent reason. And the best part is that Bandai Namco provided a PDF you could print out to replace the cover of Dark Souls 3 with the VHS cover, which I find to be more interesting than the Soul of Cinder giving me a thumbs up. <laughs> Rounding out this video is a bit of marketing for Dark Souls 1 using an enemy that never made it into the game, the Gamescom Booth Gargoyle. 
In August 2011, just before the release of Dark Souls 1, Bandai Namco featured a body paint lady gargoyle at their booth. While showcasing Dark Souls 1 with this particular enemy design is a bit gross anyways, it just gets weirder when you realize this enemy isn't even in the game. The Lady Gargoyle is only featured as a piece of concept art, not even making it far enough to be found as a cut enemy type. They could have featured the gargoyles who ended up being in the game, but they didn't, and we all know why. You know what you did, Bamco. You know what you did. And here ends part one of my series on the good, the bad, and the weird of Souls marketing. Do you remember all these, or did you learn about something new? Let me know in the comments. And what other Souls marketing do you recall? Do you remember the Fountain of Blood for Dark Souls 3 at E3? You do now! If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, see when part 2 comes out next week. Thanks for watching.